Welcome back to Wednesday, Social Studies e-learning. Uh, we left off with the Battle of Bunker Hill, uh, which was won by the British, and then we're just going to continue on from there. Uh, moving toward independence. More colonists were starting to think their, that their problems with Britain could not be settled. One person who helped shape the colonist ideas was Thomas Paine. In Common Sense, which I don't know if it was a book or a newspaper, but in Common Sense, Paine wrote that the colonists should rule themselves. From Georgia to New Hampshire, people talked about Thomas Paine's ideas. Many began to call for independence, the freedom to govern themselves. Uh, what they're saying is we don't need to be governed by Britain anymore. We can govern ourselves. Delegates from the Second Continental Congress in Philadelphia also started to talk about independence. John Adams of Massachusetts argued strongly for it. He said independence was the only way for the colonists to have liberty. In time, more and more of the delegates came to agree with Adams' point of view. On June 7, 1776, Richard Henry Lee of Virginia slowly rose from his chair at the Second Continental Congress. He told the other delegates that the 13 colonies no longer owed loyalty to the king. Lee then called for a resolution or a formal group statement of independence. Resolved that these united colonies are, and of right ought, to be free and independent states. Uh, so what they're all agreeing is we need to do this. We need to be independent. And so they had to write a formal statement stating that that was their wish, that was their intention. They had to declare it. You might have, that, that word might mean something to you. If not, it's going to mean something to you in about three minutes. A declaration is written. Congress debated Lee's resolution. It also chose a committee to write a declaration or official statement about independence to be, set to, the, to be sent to the king. The committee asked Thomas Jefferson of Virginia to write the first draft. Jefferson was a 33-year-old lawyer who had studied government and law. He used this knowledge to explain his ideas. The other members of the committee also added ideas, but Jefferson was the main author. At every evening for about 17 days, he wrote and rewrote the draft of the Declaration of Independence. Uh, so Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson was the main person that had to write the Declaration of Independence. Now, a lot of them were, were his ideas, but he had other people giving him ideas. Uh, but it took him 17 days to write and rewrite and revise and edit and change and fix and everything, uh, this Declaration of Independence. Again, back then they were using ink dipped like in a feather uh, felt, felt pen. And uh, if they made a mistake, it was they had to start over. And so it took a while to get this Declaration of Indep Independence perfectly. The Declaration of Independence. Thomas Jefferson carefully planned the Declaration of Independence in the preamble, the first part. That's a fan preamble, first part of the Constitution, the beginning, the intro, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Jefferson told why the Declaration was needed. He also explained why the colonies had the right to break away from Britain and form a new nation. So he's given the reasoning behind why the colonists are wanting to do this. Rights and grievances. The next part of the Declaration of Independence describes the colonists' main ideas about government. It also states that all people have certain rights that governments cannot take away. Jefferson wrote that the people have the right to live, be free, and seek their own happiness. These words have become some of the most famous in United States histories. Now, this is from uh, the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed, provided by their creator, with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The longest part of the Declaration lists the colonists' grievances, their complaints, against King George III and of Parliament, the British government. It also lists the ways the colonists had tried to settle their differences with Britain peacefully. In the last part of the Declaration, Jefferson stated that the colonists were free and independent states. Uh, so this document, it lists everything of why we want to be free, the reasons we want to be free, how we try to become free peacefully. That didn't work, and so 
we are just going to consider ourselves independent and basically, yes, it's time to formally fight, even though we're already fighting. Congress approves the Declaration. When he finished writing, Thomas Jefferson gave his draft to the, of the Declaration of Independence to Congress. On June 28th, it was read aloud to the delegates. They discussed it for several days and made edits. Then on July 2nd, the delegates voted to approve Richard Henry Lee's resolution to cut ties with Britain. The colonies now thought of themselves as independent states. They felt they were free to make their own laws. On July 4, 1776, Congress voted to accept the Declaration's final wording. Four days later, on July 8, large crowds gathered outside the Pennsylvania State House, today called Independence Hall. Bells rang out, and Colonel John Nixon gave the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence. Members of the Second Continental Congress also listened as Nixon read. News of the Declaration quickly spread across the former colonies. Many people who supported independence tore down pictures and statues of King George III. They sang songs, rang bells, and fired cannons in celebration. John Adams was so pleased when he heard of these celebrations that he wrote about them in a letter to Abigail Adams, his wife. He said that Independence Day should be celebrated by succeeding generations from this time forward. Colonists are happy. They are considered free. What do you think Britain's going to say about that? Do you think they think they're free yet? All right, I'll see you tomorrow.